Thank you to the Edwards School of Business, the Conexus Credit Union, the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce, and the Paul Hill School of Business for sponsoring the SBTA 2016 Kicks competition. Uh, hello everyone, we're from a diamond school as you guys already know. Uh, my name is Nisbia, this is Ipra and Nidra, my partners. And I'd like to tell you a little story of how Liam and Taylor got to know one another. So one day, they were skiing, separately of course, they didn't know each other at that time. So they were skiing and Taylor, she went to an icy patch. And she slipped, okay, and she fell into Liam. Little did she know that soon enough that she'd also fall in love with him. Now, when Liam first saw Taylor, he's like, wow, she's my ideal girl. So he proposed to her, and he knew that she wasn't work, she was still in school, and, and uh, he knew that she wanted to be a teacher, and he loved that about her. So, right now, I'm going to be, uh, this is what we're going to be ta talking to you guys about, a little bit about Liam and Taylor, and their issues, and alternatives that we have, and the best choice that we recommend they, ha they um, go with. So let's talk about let's talk about our two lovebirds. Now these two are adventurous, and they love exploring and you create a, um, create and courageous things. They like that, and they're right now in what you call the honeymoon phase, and they've been in the honeymoon phase for quite a while. So they care for each other quite a bit, you know. But the problem is that they they kind of have extravagant lives when they really can't afford to have that. So this is the net income of Liam and Taylor. It mostly, mostly relies on Liam's annual income because right now, as I said before, Taylor, she, uh, she's studying right now in the University of Saskatoon and only works in the summer. So right now you can see that the net income is around 60,000, expenses are around 43,000. 43, now you see the disposable income is around 16,000. You might be like, oh, okay, so why are they having any problems? They have disposable income. But if you're thinking that, that's wrong. Because they have so many loans and they have future goals that require so much more money than they have. So the problem is that they indulge too much in a fancy lifestyle. And they're so in love with one another that they want to spend all the time they can have with each other. You know, that's great and everything, but that phase, it's going to go soon. But, <laughs> but we just, yeah, it's going to go soon, but we don't want that to be because of financial reasons. Did you know that 41% of the, uh, couples end up having divorces because of financial reasons? So that's why they came to us for us to solve their problems. So now that we've talked about what their financial situation is, now we need to talk about what the problem of their financial situation is. So let's start with the beginning. <coughs> they have a very indulgent lifestyle. They like to do extravagant things. For example, in the reading it said they spent just $150 one night without even realizing it. And we think this is a problem because it calls for a lot of unnecessary expenses. Secondly, they have too many unnecessary expenses, which results in the first one as well. And thirdly, they don't have enough income to support their ideal lifestyle. Because they're so ambitious and they have lots of long-term goals, we don't think that with their current style of living, they're able to achieve those goals the way they would like to. Uh, fourthly, they have lots of long-term goals with no way to achieve them, just like I said. But the, way, the reason why they have no way to achieve them is because they don't have a proper budget set out for them to achieve those goals. And lastly, is that they haven't started thinking very long term. Um, my partner already told you about how they're in that honeymoon phase and they haven't really started thinking too much beyond that. Now, why is this a problem? It's because we don't think that they've started to think of beyond five years, but we are actually prepared to deal with that as well. Okay, so let's talk about some ways that we can fix these issues. Starting off with the first alternative, which is three years, three steps. So this one requires none of them having to uh, get more income, but it does involve them cutting out a lot of unnecessary expenses. And with these unnecessary expenses, although these are small changes, over the long term they can cause them a lot of savings that can help them achieve their goals. And of course that will change their lifestyle because they're cutting out expenses. The second is delaying their idea of getting to the food truck. 
Now, um, uh, Taylor right now, in the summer when she works, she works to help pay, uh, get ready for paying off the food truck. But instead we would tell you that she can now use her money that she makes in the summer to help pay off the credit card debt, which is a much larger priority. And of course that will also result in changes in lifestyle because, of, uh, because now they're using their money for different things. And lastly, it's faster education. If Taylor decides to take classes in the summertime, now she can start getting her 44,000 as a teacher much faster, allow them to go, uh, allow them to pay off their expenses also much faster, and that's also a possible solution. So, what are the pros and cons of each? For three years, three steps, we think a pro is that it requires a lot of little changes in lifestyle, but also that the expenses, it, it leads to a con, because of course, taking out expenses in your life can be a difficult task, and we're not sure if these two lovebirds are ready for that yet. Um, the second one is delaying the food truck. Um, it's good because it allows them to pay off their credit card debt, but it is a con because it puts away Liam's dream for a while. Um, thirdly, with the faster education, it's good because they get the money faster, but of course we don't think that Taylor would like to live a lifestyle in which she is so rushed and continuously having to work towards that goal when she could be living it in a much different way. So now that we've talked about all of this, Iker's going to come up here and tell you about which decision we chose and of course why we chose it. So we stick the sorry. <coughs> we stick the three years and three um sorry. Three years, three steps away because it really only cuts off down expenses, and that's so really, um, it kind of pays back earlier because we wanted to have them settled in by five years, and we came up with a way that they could be settled in in three years and have the rest of the two years to just go around with their normal lifestyle. So as you can see here, these are um, our three year steps. I'm 2016 right now. Their disposable income is twenty-one thousand dollars, and of their expense, their expenses are forty. $1,000. In 2017, their disposable income is $43,000 and their expenses are also $43,000. In 2018, their disposable income is around $44,000 and their uh, expenses are $73,000. And then that's where most of the change kind of happens because that's also the year where, um, where Taylor actually becomes a teacher. So she has another source of income. And then in the final year, 2019, where their goals are met, they make a disposable income of $76,000 and an expense of $43,000, leaving around $30,000 for them to uh, spend on disposable, spend on traveling and stuff. So this is where we made most of our changes. We tried to look for which expense was very flexible and tried to work around that. Because rent, energy, and cable are really uh, flexible, we didn't really work with them, but we did, what, we did work with the entertainment, clothing, and gifts part. Uh, the, how much they were spending was around $300 on uh, clothing and payment and gifts. And we decided that we, we know that these people are very ambitious and they're very outgoing with their money. So we didn't want to cut down too much. We cut it down to $200. And we said that the $100 that you save every month can go towards your goals. Uh, we also cut down uh, the savings on the bus pass, which went, from, which went from $30 to $0 because we decided that because Taylor is a full-time student, she has a very, st uh, very strict schedule that doesn't really move around too much, so then her husband Liam could drop her off. And then we also cut down charitable contributions from $50 to $10 because uh, we decided that a contribution of $10 a year would be great if they also volunteer. And in volunteering, they also spend a lot of time with each other, so in a way, it also helps with their relationship with each other. The best alternative is a three-year three steps, and this is how it's going to work now. I'll break it down for you. In the first year, we're going to cut the costs to uh, disposable income will be around $1,773 a month. That's how much they can spend on other stuff. That's uh, what we cut down the expenses to. And then um, in the second year, the disposable income comes around to be $3,609.53. Because of how much they saved last year, it adds on to how much they have this year. And that's why it's a bit uh, more than last year's. They have, and then from that, we decided that they could pay around $3,000 to the food truck. And the food truck costs around $5,000. So because they, have, they can pay off $3,000 right now, we decided the $609 they could work around it. In the third year, where, uh, where Taylor finishes her degree and gets a job, she also makes an income. And then, so combining their income, they make a total income, disposable income, of $5,704. $5, that is their disposable income. 
With the disposable income, we decided that they could pay off the remaining amount on their food truck, which was around $2,000. And even without that, they have a new disposable income of $3,704, which is still a lot more than how much they had in the first year. It's almost double. And with the $3,704, we decided um, also that they could actually spend that money on traveling because their, one of their goals was that they wanted to spend at least $3,000 on traveling every year because they're outgoing and they, want, they like that. So that's a really good idea for them. And by the third year, they have that much money to travel. With the new, tr uh, with the new food truck that they invested in, they may, they're making around $15,000 annually. And their long-term goal is to purchase a house. And they, to buy a house, they need an, um, a down payment of around $15,000. So we decided that the food truck could cover for that. Um, so after down payments, they have around uh, $3,704 and they can travel and they can slowly start paying back their families who also help them out buying the food truck. They actually pay $25,000 for that. So they can start paying back their loans for the family who actually don't charge interest. So it's okay if you pay them back slowly. This is the long, the long term plan um, for Liam and Taylor is to pay back their family who helped them buy the food truck, uh, to pay off their mortgage uh, for their house, possible expansion of food truck. Because of the money that they have left, they do have a lot of leeway to expand their business if their business goes well. And family. Because they're a very new, they're a newlywed couple, we, they have a lot of potential for how much their family can go. They can pay for their parents' well-being, um, for um, their parents to go in their um, care home. They can pay uh, for their possibly, if they want children, and other stuff like that. So, okay. so we've told you about the short-term and long-term plan we have for Taylor and Lee. Now, we really can help study all of their objectives, but also we've looked at possible possibilities for the future, like Icra said, like uh, how they're getting a house and they will have to pay off that mortgage, like a family, which if they haven't started thinking about, we think we give them a lot of leeway for making a lot of great financial decisions in the future. And we think where Taylor and Liam's love story started out, they found their ideal people, but now we've given them their ideal budget. So what we would tell you is that having a happy budget results in a happy future and also in a happy couple, which is all we could ever ask for for Taylor and Liam. <laughs>
with uh, with starting this new truck um, in 2016, so kind of our plan here. Do you feel that um, the client's going to have the ability to do this? Like the, the, we just talked, you can see we'll we'll have here, etc. Like, do you feel that he's going to have the time to do this along with his full-time job? Uh, and how rigorous is to be a, a laborer like he is? It actually said that he would be doing with a partner. I mean, it also said that the partner would be taking a lot of the um, work that involves it and he would kind of just be like investing in it. Therefore, we should think that. as well as their short-term goals. We would be 
Bani Pusha, Yelanta Media Retreat. Uh, we'll be opening an RRSP and a TFSA for all of their uh, financial <coughs> goals. And instead of using a credit card, we would be using a line of credit. So the pros are starting to outweigh the cons here. Um, again, they would be having a strict budget when they're not used to, so it would be kind of hard for them. Um, they'd have to be more aware of their spending habits, and they wouldn't be allowed to go on a so many dates. That's not going to stop them from coming home and having a bottle of wine and a date at home. So uh, the pros to this uh, alternative are their goals are quickly met. They still have a lot of spending money. They can travel, which is really important to them. They can invest, and the balances, or their risk, risks and rewards are balanced. So our recommendation, our recommendation, we recommend alternative three because they would steadily pay down all their debts and they wouldn't be paying so much interest over time. Um, we put a halt to all the reckless spending. We would cut the credit card and open a line of credit so that they wouldn't be charged so much interest if they did need to go into some small debts uh, every once in a while. And we'd make large con contributions to goals like buying a food truck and the house and the retirement. So the risk assessments, we wanted to make sure that we covered all our bases and uh, had uh, Liam and Taylor, you know, <coughs> to go. So they are adventurous people, which does end up adding up when you're going out on trips all the time. And they just really couldn't handle that. So we know that they're uh, liable to overspend, so we did, as Kira will mention, make some room in the budget so that they could if they need to overspend. Um, they're newlyweds, so they had some possible expenses, uh, like babies, that might uh, pop up as well as food truck emergencies. So when they buy a uh, food truck, if they need a new grill or a new tire or stuff, they would have some money uh, saved for that. Well. So now here's one, we'll tell you about our implementation plan and how we're going to make everything work out for Liam and Taylor. Thank you. So our implementation plan, as we said, we're going to alternative three. So our monthly surplus will be about $2,000. We got that from their combined income of a month and then just by, or subtracted it by from the expenses. Um, we are going to pay down the credit card within one month, and we are going to increase some of their debt payments, so their car payment and their student loan payment. So here's a breakdown of their budget. Um, to the right is the old expenses, and to the left is the new expenses. As you can see, there's a difference of about $500. Um, where we got this, the changes is um, their clothing and entertainment. We went from $300 to $250. Uh, their phone, internet, and cable, it went from $122 to $30. What we did there is we decided that it would be better if they went with a wireless package instead of a home phone. Liam and Carrie both, <laughs> Taylor, sorry, both have um, home phones, and so they won't be needing, they both have cell phones, so they won't be needing a home phone. Also, they won't need cable because everything that you can find on the TV, you can download on the internet and watch it from there. So with the wireless package, it just saves them money and they still get all that they had before. Also, we added in disability and life insurance because it is so likely that you fall and break your arm at work and we want them to be covered for that. We want to make sure that their life is disaster proof and that they are covered in all aspects. So in month one and month two, their surplus is again $2,000 and we are going to use that money to pay down the credit card immediately. Their credit card interest rates were about 19.9%, were and that was just too risky for us to just leave and pay slowly over time. So we used that money to get rid of it completely. So we also the budget, again, for the disability and life insurance is about $240. Um, we're going to open a TFSA and an RRSP just to help them save for their retirement and other things. In month two, <coughs> we're going to increase their car payment to $600, and we're going to increase their student loan payment to $100 monthly. So here's some of their goals for month one and two, which is the food truck, saving for a home, and saving for traveling. So with our plan, we are going to work towards all of these goals and make sure that they are met as soon as they can, possibly while following a strict budget. So in month two, or after the, the increased payment, um, we're gonna have a, the rest of the surplus of about $1,400. We're gonna use this money and put it towards saving for the food truck. So that will take three months to get to the $5,000, and then he can make his payment towards the food truck. So month five, we are going to, again, the uh, car payment is at $600. We are going to take the student loan payment and increase it to $300, which it was at $100. In the case study, it, never, it states that there will be no penalty to increasing the payments at any time. So we chose that this would be the best for them because it will increase their, um, their payments. So we're also going to take the rest of the surplus and start investing it. We're going to 
going to put $700 into an RSP for a home. We're going to invest $300 into a TFSA for traveling and less rooms. And we're going to invest $200 into a TFSA for emergencies like the food truck or unexpected children. <laughs> so fast forward a little bit. After year one, they have about $5,000 saved in their RRSP. They have about $2,000 saved in the TFSA. The food truck is completely paid for. Their tax refund for that year is about $8,000, which they are going to put into their RRSP. Um, each year, we recommend that they take their refund and put it into the RRSP, creating a loop and creating a momentum that will hopefully further them into a better retirement plan. Year three, um, Taylor is done her, unit, or her schooling and she has become a teacher. We assume that she gets a job right off the bat, bringing in $44,000 a year, which increases um, about $3,000 a month. So with the $3,000 a month, we are going to increase her RRSP um, contribution to $1,000. In year three, her RRSP will be at about $30,000, which we decided to use the home buyer's plan to start saving for our house. So the home buyer's plan is a good way <coughs> to save for a down payment, and you can only use up to $25,000 of your RSP, and that is what we recommend you do. Just a little um, if extra information on her RRSP. We have invested into two different types of bonds. We decided to go with bonds because they're only in this market for a short period of time and want to get by their house quickly. And the rule of thumb is if you're going to be investing in less than five years, do not invest in the stock market. So here's just another timeline to recap on what we said. The, in month one and two, the credit card will be paid. In month three, the food truck. In year one, the student loan will be paid and they have, will have enough money to travel from their TFSA. In year three, the RRSP will be um, well enough for them to buy a home or a down payment for their home. And within year six, their car loan will be paid off. Now we know that Taylor and Liam did not want to buy a home without, with still having debt. But we felt that it was more realistic for them to get into a home and be comfortable and still have a little debt inside, but we'll be paying back soon. So in your six, as I said, the car is paid off. The TFSA is about $25,000 if they have not touched it already. Their emergency fund is at $14,000. And with this, it will take, with their budget, it will take two years to repay their RRSP from using the home buyer's plan. I would now like to open the floor to any questions and thank you for your time. Yeah, I have a question. How do you compare the line of credit and the credit card? Can you tell us like the um, The line of credit would be through a bank, much like a credit card. It would work uh, basically the same. You're borrowing money and paying it back. However, a line of credit is a lot, like they have a lot less interest on it, like 15% less interest. So we decided to go with that. Do you think they would qualify for a line of credit? Uh, we do think that they would qualify because they do have very good credit that's been paid all their debts back within three years. Did you take into consideration the fact that uh, Taylor needed to get a full-time job after year two um, in her field? Did you, did you include that in the budget? Um, we did. We, the, we thought that she would get a full-time job immediately after she was uh, graduated. Um, but if she didn't, we would just continue with the budget that we had so that um, they could keep living. As you mentioned a few times, you said it was a strict budget and it's very, very strict to follow. What kind of leeway do we have um, with spending? Is there kind of a range at all, or is it more or less this is the plan we need to follow to a T? I know we have an emergency fund created. Is that emergency fund going to give us more to be off or go off in a bit, or is there leeway built into this? Um, the emergency fund is mostly for that. If it doesn't have to be used for just the truck or just the baby. If they need to come in, if they come into emergency or they need to buy that shirt at the store, then it can be used. We don't recommend to always use the emergency fund, but it's there if it is needed. Hard. Your student loan interest rate is 4 percent but your car loan is 1.9%. So why don't you pay off your student loan first? Why do you want to increase the payment on the cost immediately? Shouldn't you pay off the one that has a higher interest? We felt because the car had such a bigger payment, like loan from the start, that it would be best to pay that off and start on that one quickly. Because the student loan was only $2,000, that we would be able to chip at it slowly and because she was still a 
And how are you getting the number on the tax refund? I saw like there are seven thousand eight thousand. How do you do that this time? Uh, we used an online TurboTax calculator. Where did you get to the income of 60,000? Is that net or gross? Oh, <laughs> that is the net. Yeah. With the, uh, with the um, food truck starting out here, um, do you feel like uh, a lot of stress on um, the, the individual or spouse with running that along with running their business, or is it do you feel the mental health will still be fine? Um, we don't really feel that they would be put under a lot of stress. Uh, in the case study, it mentioned that he would have a partner to do all the daytime work, and he would be doing it as more of a side weekend hobby. So, thinking about your the truck business, right? Quite a lot of other brands. They have to come up with five thousand. They are going to borrow. Um, trying to balance the risk, that is why we created the emergency fund, because you never really quite know what is going to happen. If they were to come into a very bad incident where they need more money, we'd have to revise the budget to create room for 